Hello everyone. Welcome to Come Sit at My Table. We're thrilled to have you here. Today is Sunday, so you know that it's another Subscriber Sunday for us. On Sundays, we use recipes that have been sent to us from our subscribers. And today's recipe comes from Sabrina Tidwell in Grady, Alabama. Now, Sabrina sent four recipes. She didn't send a letter with them, but she sent four really good recipes. And I have chosen one of those four to do today. We're going to make porcupine meatballs. Now, this is a recipe I've never made, but I have eaten it several times before. When I was growing up, it's a recipe that my mom made, and even my Aunt Maxine made porcupine meatballs, and I can remember them making those, but I've never made them. So when I saw Sabrina's recipe for these, I thought, okay, here's my chance. I'm going to give these a try. So today, we're going to make porcupine meatballs. Let's talk about what we're going to use. First, we need some ground beef, and there's we've got one pound here, which is what the recipe calls for. Now, because we're mixing this up like a meatloaf and you don't cook the meat first, I'm using a, a 93.7 blend of meat, which is, as far as I know, the least fat you can get in ground beef. And the reason for that is that I don't want a lot of grease coming out of this meat while the meatballs are cooking in the oven. I don't want grease in my sauce that goes over the meatballs. So I got 93.7. I would never use 93.7 to make hamburgers for us if I were grilling hamburgers because I like the fat in the hamburger when I'm grilling a hamburger, it gives it flavor. But I just don't think that would work in these. So I did get the 93.7 and you may wanna look for that too. And with that ground beef, we are going to add one half cup of instant rice. Yes, we're using minute rice. You don't want to use the long cooking rice. And we need one half cup of water along with one third cup of chopped onion. And we're going to chop that in just a minute. We're also going to add one teaspoon of salt. I'll set that over there. One eighth teaspoon of pepper and one eighth teaspoon of garlic powder. Now that's what's going to make our meatballs. Then for the sauce to go over them, we're going to use a 15 ounce can of tomato sauce mixed with one cup of water and two teaspoons of Worcestershire sauce. Now, if you don't pronounce it Worcestershire, I will not make fun of you for pronouncing <laughs> it incorrectly. <laughs> but if you pronounce it another way, I expect that same courtesy back. I've always said Worcestershire. That's what I'm always going to call it. Okay, so we're gonna lay Sabrina's porcupine meatball recipe right there. And we're going to start by getting one third of a cup of onion diced. So let's just chop this up. Now I would think we want a fairly fine dice because even though these are going to cook for an hour, this onion is going in raw. So I would think we need a pretty fine dice on the onion. And it doesn't take much. Now you can see here, I'm going to slice this really thin because I just feel like it needs a chance to cook up in those meatballs. And I don't think it'll even take half of this Vidalia onion. I absolutely love Vidalia's. I think they are such good onions. I really think that's probably plenty. And I'm just gonna run my knife through those just to make sure they're chopped up pretty well. Even though I know they are, I'm just going to run my knife through those quickly. Okay, let's measure out one third of a cup. Wouldn't it be neat if we had exactly a third of a cup? That probably would never happen, would it? Nope, not a chance. Okay, just a little bit more. I'm gonna pack those in because, I mean, after all, onions are a flavor. You know what? That's not that much, is it? I'm just gonna I use all of that. Huh? I would have added it. 
I'm going to. It's not that much. I see a piece right there that's not chopped up. I'm going to chop it. Okay. I'm just going to add all of it. It won't hurt. Okay. So let's get everything in our bowl and start mixing. Let's start with our ground beef. We'll put in our rice, our one half cup of water, our onion, and we need our spices in. Did your mom ever make porcupine meatballs? You know, I don't think my mom ever made meatballs, period. Never? I don't think so. We really? We would have spaghetti with meat sauce, but not meatballs. Well, I don't think she ever made any kind of meatballs. Even like with your spaghetti, you didn't have spaghetti and meatballs? Nope, we had meat sauce, but not meatballs. Okay. Well, I mean, if you've got meat sauce, that's pretty much the same thing, right. isn't it? Yeah. Okay, let's put in one teaspoon of salt. And then it says one eighth teaspoon, and the smallest measuring spoon I have is a fourth, so I'm gonna use half of it. And an eighth of a teaspoon of garlic powder. And if I get a little extra of that in there, I'm not gonna worry about that too much because that's just flavor. All right, now, I have washed my hands. I just wanna make this clear. <laughs> and if you're gonna make this, you better scrub your hands too. We had somebody in one video that was just appalled that I had mixed up something. I don't know if it was meatloaf or something and had worn my ring. Well, my ring does not come off my hand. We've been married 30 years, last month, and my ring has only been off twice, and that was when I had surgery. This ring does not come off. But when I wash my hand, I do pull it down and hold my thumb there and wash under my ring and wash my finger. So my finger and my ring are clean, I promise you. And nobody's gonna be eating these but the two of us anyway, so. Oh my goodness, this is gonna be so good. Now, my it doesn't say on the recipe, but my suspicion is you really don't want to overwork this meat. You don't want it to become tough. So you just want to get those spices and that onion mixed in, get that water combined with it. And the reason you need that water is for the rice. It will help that rice, especially since we're using really, really lean meat. There's not gonna be much grease in there for it to absorb. So that rice needs that liquid. Is the rice why it's called the porcupine? It is, because the rice kind of looks like porcupine quills. This will be a first for me. I, just, I can't believe you've never had porcupine. We didn't have them a lot, but I can't believe you never had them. Your mom is such a good cook. I would have thought this would have been right up her alley. The truth is, and I love my mom dearly, she passed away in 2015, but she was not a natural cook. My dad was by far the cook. But I'm gonna tell you, Melissa's mom knows how to cook. She can really cook. Okay, I'm going to wash my hands off before I start scooping out the meatballs. So give me just a second. All right, we are making our meatballs. And I am using a scoop just because I want to make sure that my meatballs are all approximately the same size. That way they cook evenly and they're all done at the same time. So I am using a scoop. If you want to use a scoop, you can do that. You just decide what size you want. This one is a about a two and a half to three tablespoon scoop. Sabrina's directions, the instructions for the recipe say to make them a little smaller than a golf ball. So this is about the right size. And I've gotten 16 out of it and I've got just a little bit left over. You know what, let's just make one bigger one. Cause that's not enough to make one more. And I don't wanna waste it. We don't wanna waste food, do we? So I'll just make one that's a hair bigger and we will squeeze it in right there. Okay, now the next thing we have to do is make our sauce to go over the meatballs. 
So we're gonna start by adding our 15 ounces of tomato sauce to a bowl. And then we'll add our water and our Worcestershire sauce. And we wanna make sure we get all of that tomato sauce out of there because this is really, this and the water is the only liquid we're gonna have. So make sure you get it all. You don't wanna leave any of that in there. All right, you know what I think I'm gonna do? I'm gonna put just a little bit of that water in there and kind of slosh that around. Try to get all of that out of there. Okay. And now we'll add the rest of our water. Push off my spatula to get all that tomato off there. And our two teaspoons. Yeah, I can't get that to open. Two teaspoons of Worcestershire. Ooh, that one went over a little bit. I'll make this one a little smaller. And then I'm just gonna whisk that together. I have been warned by somebody to do this gently so I don't slosh it all over my clothes. <laughs> I wonder who would have ever thought you would have sloshed anything out yeah. to use those fancy culinary well, I, terms. Of I words. can't imagine why you would think I would do that. It's just, you know, long shot. Yeah. Like I do it every time I cook. Oh my. We were talking about your mom earlier. What a good cook she is. What was your favorite thing she made? You have one? Oh, definitely, uh, pot roast. Pot roast. You still love pot roast. I do, hers was fabulous. Okay, well, that's good to know. I won't try to compete with that. Can never compete with a mom or a grandma, that's even that's harder. That's even harder. Don't even try that. Yeah, I know, can't do that. Can't compete with a grandma. So, Joyce's pot roast, hmm. With potatoes and carrots. Oh my gosh. And onions? Oh, definitely. Yes. Yeah. So good. Did she do it in a pressure cooker? She did. Hmm. That my was mom did too. I was never good at. We I never had, enjoyed cooking with a pressure cooker. We had pot roast every Sunday. That was just a given. I oh, know. We didn't have it quite that often, but. We had it every Sunday. If it was Sunday, we were eating pot roast. And I had a friend who came home with me most Sundays after church because he loved my mom's pot roast. So that was just almost a given. That's what we were having. And that was because when church was over, she could go home and throw that in the pressure cooker and it could be ready really fast. All right, now Sabrina's directions say cover with tin foil. Bake for 45 minutes. Let's see, doesn't matter which side's down, I don't think so, but I'm trying to put that down. Bake for 45 minutes at 350, then uncover, spoon the sauce over the balls, and bake uncovered for 15 more minutes. So that's what we're gonna do. So I've covered it pretty tightly here. We want it to keep all that heat in. And our oven is preheated to 350. So we're gonna go in for 45 minutes, then we'll uncover it and we'll bake it 15 more uncovered before we come back and try it. So in we go. These absolutely smell wonderful. The house does smell good, doesn't it? Yeah, Melissa just came through the house and said, this house smells wonderful, and it does. It smells so good. So, let's, do a, let's try a meatball. That looks so good. I have mashed potatoes and green beans on the stove. 
That's what we're going to have with these. Ooh, babe, these are hot. You know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna spoon a little of this gravy, tomato gravy, right on top of those. Cause that has to make it good, right? Sure smells wonderful. It sure does. All right, are you taking the first bite? I'm gonna wait. Okay. Well, we're eating in like I know. three minutes, so I better not take a huge bite, Hedda. It is steaming, so it's hot. Mm. Is it like you remember them? Mm-hmm. It is. And for the sauce to be so simple, I mean, it was just tomato sauce, water, and Worcestershire. It's very good. Very simple, very plain, delicious. Mm. Doesn't have to be fancy and complicated to be tasty. That's right. And the onions are done, but they've got just a tad bit of crunch to them, which I really like. They're not mushy at all. How about the rice? The rice is perfect. It's a really good, good dish. Thank you, Sabrina. We do appreciate you sharing this recipe with us. We would like to ask you to do us a favor and go right below the video and click the like button. Also, that share button that's right below the video, and you can put this on your own page so your friends and family can see it. And if you've never done it before, you only have to do this once, we sure would appreciate you clicking that subscribe button, the little notification bell beside of it, and the word all. That just subscribes you to our page so you'll never miss another video. Remember that right below the video, Melissa always puts the written directions. She puts that recipe right there in the description box. If you'll click where you see the title and the word more, that box will expand. The recipe is right there, and our contact information is under that. Now, this is a subscriber recipe. So, this is a recipe that Sabrina mailed to us, and if you want to send in a recipe or recipes, you're welcome to get our contact information out of that description box right under the recipe and mail us some recipes if you'd like to. We do have to get them through the mail. We cannot print all the recipes off of the comments section. So you will have to mail them to us if you want us to have them. There is a comment section right at the bottom of the screen down below this video and we love reading your comments. So feel free to go right down there and leave us a comment. We love hearing from you. We want you to remember that you are always welcome to Come sit at my table. And more importantly, we want you to remember that God loves you and so do we. Have a great day.